Hey guys and girls, my name is Alan, and in today's video we'll be covering some more Star Wars Battlefront beta footage, and this time I'll be looking at the Walker Assault game mode on the map Hoth. Now, if you don't know what this game mode is, basically it's sort of like um, Battlefield where you have um, like stages of objectives and then you progress through each one one at a time. Except uh, in in Walker Assault, you only have really one objective for either team. So for the attacking team, uh, the Imperial troops, uh, you have to protect your walkers, those giant things in the background that you can see progressing really slowly. Uh, you have to protect those from the point of entry on the map, which is which is there, all the way to where the power stations are, right at the back of the map. And like I said, they do walk really slow, uh, and uh, you just got to try and protect them as best you can by killing enemy troops and stopping the rebels from carrying out their objective, which is to activate um, a pair of uplink stations. And as you can see on the screen, uh, at the top in the centre, there are three dots. Now, each of those dots represents a pair of uplink stations. So, once a walker has reached that point and gone past it, you'll fall back to the next set of uplink stations, and so on and so forth. So, there's three sets of uplink stations, uh, three sets of pairs of uplink stations, and you just got to try and um, hold those for as long as you can before being pushed back uh, to, the, to the next one, uh, and then eventually to the final stage. And so, basically, the way you have to attack the walkers as Team Rebel is you have to protect these uplinks, so you have to activate them, protect them, and then when they're, when they're activated, it causes an airstrike from Y-Wing Bombers, I think they're called, and it's only during the attack from the Y-Wing Bombers that the walkers will be exposed for you to attack. Now, what I mean by exposed is the walkers by default have a shield, so at the moment, uh, there's no there's no uh, airstrike coming in from the Y wings, so if you were to shoot a walker now, uh, or your team or whatever, it doesn't matter what weapon they use or however much firepower they lay down, the walker will not take any damage because it's got a shield. Now, once you've activated the uplinks and you call in the the bombers, well, it happens automatically, but you activate them to call them in. Uh, it's only during this period that the, the walker's shields will temporarily be disabled and you'll notice that when this is the case um, there should be a message on screen saying attack the walkers and obviously when you fire bullets and stuff it will come up as hit markers because you are actually doing damage and also the walker itself um, the shield kind of I don't know I don't know what the word to use frazzles sort of sort of like it looks like it looks like it's it's being disabled the shield so you know then that's the time to, to you know put some bullets into it and and whatever else um, see now I'm explaining it as if I know it really really well the game mode but I've, I've like I said I've, I, I didn't play a lot of the beta and this match is on my first night well my first and only night playing it um, I, I didn't play a lot of the beta because I, I wasn't able to, which is unfortunate because once I started playing it I did have, did have a bit of fun and I kind of regretted not playing a bit more of it when I, when I had the chance but I, I was busy so it's whatever. But apart from the little text on the screen, um, there's not a lot of prompts during the gameplay itself so there's that little text message, not text message, there's the um, at the start of every single game they have that little brief uh, summary of what it is you're meant to do. So for Walker Assault they've got the, uh, the the two types of objectives, obviously one side for the Imperials, one side for the Rebels, and then on Drop Zone everyone gets the same message because everyone does the same uh, objective. So I mean unless you take the time to read that and remember it, you, you kind of just have to fumble your way around in the game and, and just follow what your team are doing. And then just hopefully if you notice like obviously because th they do announce it when you're supposed to like attack or defend or whatever it is the uplinks and then of course attack and def uh, attack the, the walker or defend the walker um, but sometimes you know when you're in the heat of battle sometimes you don't always hear that announcement and the text that announces it uh, at the center of the screen on top just in the, under where the dots are that's not very prominent I I played this game um, once or twice uh, already and I I until until someone told me about the messages on the on the screen, I never really noticed them. To be honest, it was only after someone told me about them that I realised that there was an indication to attack or defend. And obviously, I, I listened out for the announcement as well. But until someone told me about it, I you know it could have taken me a few more games for me to find out, which is not very good to be honest. I think when when you're supposed to attack or defend uh, whatever the objectives are, whether it's the uplink or the, or the walker, 
it should be a lot more like pronounced so it should be a big message on screen or like it should be some sort of indication that you should be attacking or defending straight away because like I said the the window of opportunities to attack the walker is limited so if you waste a few seconds by not attacking straight away then obviously you know that's time wasted and uh, I've seen matches end uh, and won and lost by very small margins so those extra few seconds and if we're talking about the entire team not firing at the same time uh, you know that's that's a lot of damage that has, has gone wasted um, so yeah that's that's the game mode uh, it's some people have said it's a bit unbalanced in that it's easier to win as the Imperials just because it um, it's quite difficult to take down the walkers um, from my experience yes and no it's it, it does take a lot of effort to take down the walkers but um, I feel that's more because as a beginner to like, when I, like I said, when I first started playing the beta, I didn't really know what it is I was supposed to be doing. I didn't know, um, I didn't know the, the different stages of the map and uh, and at what points should I fall back, at what point should I shoot the walker, and so on and so forth. And I imagine a lot of people out there probably still don't know what it is they're meant to be doing, or at least they do know, but they're not really looking out for the signs in order to, to do it. And so this all adds up, I think, and uh, which is one of the reasons why it's so much easier to win as the Imperials. Because as the Imperials, all you need to do is focus on killing the opposition forces and just basically just pushing them back. And anybody can do that. You don't even need instructions to do that because, I mean, by default, that is what you're going to do in a competitive shooter. So, yeah. But whereas the rebels, you you kind of need to do a bit. You, you need to do a bit more than just killing the opposite. Uh, enemy forces you actually need to like attack obviously the, the walkers and in order to attack you need to do something before that you need to enable the attack in the first place so there's a few more stages involved being the rebels which um, for some people obviously if they don't know then they don't know and, and until they do know they won't start doing it um, so so I think that's the that's the main reason why some people say it's it's harder to win as the as the rebels but I mean I've played in games where as long as you communicate with the team and not even, not even all the team. Like when I was playing with my friends, um, like I said, I didn't know that I had to do this stuff until they told me I had to do this stuff. And then once they told me, I, I was looking out for the signs to do it. And then obviously everyone else knew what they were doing. So once I was on board, obviously my one gun out of twenty is not going to make that much of a difference. But it all adds up. All this extra damage. So I think it's just, it's just a matter of educating people um, to let you know, just so that everyone knows what they're doing. And so, if they, yeah, if they, if they, if they increase the awareness of the objectives, then I think, I think the game mode will be all right. It's just they need to adjust that a little bit. But maybe, I don't know, maybe the walker is a little bit too tough. But then again, there are certain ways you can take it up quite quickly. And again, until people know how to do these things or or, or become aware of them, they won't actually start doing them. So they'll just continue to struggle. So one of the ways that I I learned about was um, you can you from the uh, from the random drops you can actually get. Um, what do you call it? Uh, an orbital strike, which is basically you manually target a location on the map, and then it just bombards it from space with a massive orbital strike, as the name suggests. And this does a crazy ton of damage. So if you do this as a walker is exposed, then you'll easily strip away like half of its health just on your own. And then if your team just continues to put down fire into it, you can take it down probably before it reaches the second uh, second set of uplinks easily. And then you can just have to concentrate on the uh, on the final walker. Uh, and the second part is, at the very final stage of the map, you can call in a different type of plane. Um, you have to forgive me, I, I, I don't know the name of it, but it's the one where you can wrap uh, a rope around the legs of the walker and take it down that way. And that's only applicable in the final stage of the map, so it's like a, a last resort sort of thing. So if you've taken out one of the walkers uh, just naturally, with gunfire and stuff before it reaches the final stage then you guys can just concentrate on that other walker uh, either with gunfire or by using one of those planes um, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan so yeah, don't don't <laughs> don't grill me too much in the comment section I, um, I, I you know I, I don't mind the franchise I you know I've seen the films and they're pretty good but I'm just not as fanatic about it as I know some people are so yeah just go easy um, and so yeah uh, what else just like the other map that's available in the beta, I think graphically the map looks so good, um, and I, I love snowy maps. They just they're always really interesting for me because um, I, I quite like the snow. I think it's just 
brings back happy memories, you know, my childhood and stuff like that. But I mean, it's just the snow just looks good on this map. It looks so good, and the icing on the icing, <laughs> the um, the frost and the ice on the rocks, it just it looks so so good and um, really really sets the atmosphere of of the map. Like even when you're inside in the uh, bunkers, I don't know, bu tunnels, bunkers, I don't know what you call them, but when you're inside the the rebel uh, base. Even you know, even the the detail on the walls there in terms of the ice and the snow just looks so good. Now speaking of bases, I think one of the things that is a bit of an issue in this game is the respawning. In other Battlefield titles, uh, when you know when you play this sort of game mode, uh, objective based, uh, and you have to reach certain checkpoints, when you progress, then your enemies have to uh, respawn further back so if, let's say you're attacking uh, let's say you reach the first checkpoint then enemies can no longer respawn at that checkpoint they have to respawn at the second checkpoint which is further down and then your team will start respawning at the the first checkpoint but in this game that's sort of hit and miss I, I know that I know it does apply in most cases but sometimes you just find yourself randomly spawned when there are still enemies in that area and obviously that's an, either an easy kill for you or a stupid death which doesn't really make any sense and is sort of a bit frustrating at times. Like I said, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. I've experienced it, my friends have experienced it, and uh, you know I've done it to enemies and enemies have done it to me, and it's, it's nothing you can control really, but it just happens. So I think they should bring back like safe zones for you to respawn, or at least have it so that enemies can't you know, penetrate right into the back of your base because otherwise they can just run around there and as you're spawning you get shot and it's just you know it's 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 not great to be honest in terms of uh, in terms of gameplay and the the other good thing about this map is the vehicles and the pickups are oh, i think they are so fun i when i first started playing i didn't know what the hell i was doing i didn't know what each of these pickups meant um, it was only after I played a few matches that I understood that each pickup has its own unique identity. So planes will have obviously uh, the plane symbol, and then the heroes will have the uh, the lightsaber symbol, and the vehicles will obviously have uh, their respective vehicle symbols. And then the stars. Well, once you start playing it, then you realise what the star pickups are and how best to use them. I think again, this all adds to the. Um, I don't want to say confusion, but. There's, there's a bit to take on when you first start playing the game. I'm not saying the game is complex, but I'm just saying like, obviously when you first play, when you first start playing any game, there's obviously going to be a little bit of a learning curve. And I just think because um, Battlefront, it kind of veers away from the the standard unlocking progression system. Uh, so far from what I've seen, a lot of weapons are just as they are. So you reach a certain level, you unlock it, and that's it. There's no like grinding for attachments or gaining experience from using it and then therefore getting better at using that weapon it's all just standard and then if you want to get things like vehicles or pick up heroes or something like that and play as them then you just gotta run around the map and look for these drops and in some ways that's good but in other ways it's bad as well because it means the game is very casual anyone can pick it up and play as you know Darth Vader or, or Luke Skywalker or you know they, if they can if they get to the planes or the vehicle pickups then obviously they can take control of those which is good because then it means you know, everyone has access to it everyone can have a go um, but on the other side if they don't want it then they pick it up and it's wasted you know uh, until the next respawn or alternatively if they pick it up and they're terrible with it and they keep picking it up and the people who are actually good with these things don't get a look in then again wasted I mean yeah the people who are picking it up are probably having fun even though they're failing but these pickups are meant to help your team um, they're meant to give your team an edge or you know like an advantage or you know meant to boost your attacking potential or defensive potential even so obviously if they're wasted then that's that's, that's a loss to the to your team and could potentially damage the result of the game um, the stationary turrets and things like that I mean they're okay they're, they're quite good but the biggest thing that I've noticed is that enemies are able to again, like I say, spawn either behind you or flank you too easily uh, with no repercussions and then they can use these turrets and kill you from behind as your team is respawning. Now, I don't know how many of you out there have experienced that yourselves, but I've experienced it a few times and it is annoying as hell. I mean, because there's nothing you can do about it, you can't spawn any further back from where those, from where those enemies already are. 
Uh, so you'll either be spawning among them or directly in their line of fire. So uh, there just needs to be, like I said, some safe zones and I think that'd be alright. And I think that's about it. I think I've covered all the main points. Uh, attacking, defending, uh, talked a little bit about the drops. Obviously I could have gone into more details regarding the vehicles and stuff, but possibly in a future video. Uh, I've talked long enough today so far. Um, I'm going to be making another video on the drop zone game mode, so if you're interested in hearing my thoughts and opinions on that, then do check back in the future for that. And like I said, I'll probably do a couple of videos regarding the, uh, the vehicles. Um, I know I'm definitely going to do one for the fighter jets, so if you're interested in hearing my views on those, then again, do check back in the future. So as you can see, we did win. It was a very, very close game. Could have gone either way in those last couple of seconds, but that's what I'm saying when I was talking about the uh, the drops earlier. Like that extra little bit of firepower can make the difference uh, towards the end, as you just saw for yourself. So anyway, um, thanks for watching the video. Consider tapping that like button if you enjoyed, and until next time, take care. Uh -oh.